Okay, now we're going to look at conditional statements. So, what I've done here is I've typed in some comment lines which are basic pseudocode for a program that's going to ask the user to enter their password. And if the password is, is let me in, then it will display access granted. And if the password is not correct, then it will display access denied. Okay, so the way we can think about that is that we first get the password from the keyboard. And then we're going to compare if this the thing if the user has entered the correct password in this variable, if it equals the value called let me in, then we're going to allow access. So if it's true, we'll allow access. If it's false, then we'll deny access. These can sometimes be called conditional statements or branching statements because there's one branch for either action. So now we're going to look at implementing that flowchart in Python. So the first thing we're going to do is ask the user to enter their password. This is just a straight input command. Please enter the password. Close your speech marks and remember to close your brackets. Now, this is where we actually need to do the conditional statement. So what we want to check is that if password equals let me in, then we'll display access granted. So what we say is if the variable called password. So if the value of that is equal to, now you'll notice it, that we use a double e for equals as a logical comparison. We say if password equals let me in, now it's case specific, then you put a colon, and then when you press the enter key, you'll notice that it's been indented. Now that means that any code here is inside the if statement. So this is the code that will happen. So what we'll say is we will print to screen Access granted. And close your speech mark. However, if the password is not, so what we use is the else command, we say print access denied. Close your speech marks, close your bracket. So if we save that program. And run it. So please enter the password now. It could be better, so let's just first of all try it with the word pass. Access denied, so that's fine. Now we'll just run that again. And this time we'll put the word password. It's saying access denied, so that's fine. We'll just make our little bit more user friendly by putting a colon and a space there. So now we'll check if it actually works with the correct password. So let me it's granted. Now it is case specific, so if we do let me in with a capital L, okay, the access is added, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so now we're just going to look at um, some numerical statements. So this is going to be um, a vote of voting age. So you can vote if you're 18 or over. So what we're going to say is that age is it's an int and it's input. Please enter your age. And you'll notice I've made that an, int an integer variable there. So if the age is greater than or equal to 18, then we will print, sorry, tab it over there. You can print, you can vote. Otherwise, so else, print. Sorry, you cannot vote. Close your speech marks, close your brackets. Now you will notice that every time I've been pressing the enter key, it's wanting to, to, to move, move over extra. That is because that bracket there hasn't been closed. So, we will just test and run this program first. So, run that one. So over here, if I put in 17, it should say I can't vote. And again, I'll just put in that there. Uh, I will just test boundary so some extreme data 18 I can vote and I'm just going to put in a value that's over 19. So that's a basic if statement with a numerical condition where it has to be greater than or equal to 18. 
Okay, so in this program we're going to look at if statements again, and what we're going to do is calculate people's uh, tax percentage based on their salary. So we've got four possible outcomes here, ranging from 0% up to 45%. So all I've done so far is ask the user to input salary, and I've made sure that it's an integer variable. So what, we're going to, we, what we could say is if salary is less than or equal to 11,500, then we could say that tax rate equals zero. Now that would work for that value there. Now I'm just going to copy and paste that there. Now this time, if the salary is greater than, so I am implementing this line here. Um, we could say if salary is greater than 11,501 and salary it's less than or equal to 45,000, then the tax rate, I'll say that's 0.20, which, which would be 20%. Now the trouble with that is that even if this line, if this um, condition validates as true, so for example, my salary is 10,000 pounds, my tax rate is zero, it would still need to check these if statements here. So a slightly more efficient way to do this one would be to use an ELIF. It will only check this condition, or this if statement, if this one wasn't true. So which means I could copy and paste that one. I just make sure it's not indented. I could say that now if it's greater than 45,001 and all the way up to 150,000, at which point my tax rate would be 40%. Now what I could say is if it's not that one, not this one, not that one, then my last condition isn't an elif, it's an else. In which case I don't need a condition, I just have else and the tax rate would be 45. So if we print, so if we test this program, although I should really print out the output, so print, okay, rate is and what I'll do in five will rather than say 0.45 we're going to times it by a hundred so the tax rate is whatever the tax rate is multiplied by a hundred brackets remember we need to turn that into a string and just to make it a bit more user friendly I'm going to put a percentage sign on the end and close my bracket. So we save that. Now I'm going to go and run it. So I'll test the top bracket first. So the top bracket was that it would, uh, sorry, the lowest bracket would be 11,000. My tax rate is 0%, so that seems to work okay. Uh, I'll pick something in the range of the other bracket, so 15,000. And I'll just test the other main bracket with just some normal test data. I'm not going to extensively test this one. And last but not least, uh, if it's greater than 456,000. This program makes it much more efficient because if this condition is true, then it won't check that one, that one, or that one. And likewise, because it's an and, both of those conditions have to be true. So the salary has to be greater than that and less than that. And this is just a way of displaying a percentage, which is stored as a dec decimal as an integer number. So this is quite similar to the one before. So what we're going to do is we're going to store the use, use user's age just already and we're going to ask them to enter a subject. Now if their subject is computing then if it's true we're going to check if their age is 16. If their age is 16 we're going to display the message choose higher computing. If their age is 6, if their subject is computing and their age isn't 16 then we're going to ask them to choose NAT5. Now if their subject isn't computing at all, then we'll go down a different branch and we'll ask them why didn't you choose computing. So just to make life a little bit easier, we're going to store the user's age as 16. 
we're going to ask them to enter their subject just using a normal input command. Please enter your subject. Just a bit of typing there. Okay, speech mark, close the bracket. Now, here's where we're going to start our if statements. What we're going to say is if the subject is equal to the value computing in the colon, then in here we're actually going to need to check if their age is 16. So if their age is equal to 16, then we're going to say that you should choose higher. Else, still in the now you'll notice that I'm still in the line here, which means that I'm just I'm, I'm inside this if statement here. Else, I'm going to now I could have just put a separate if statement there. I could have just said if age is not equal to 16, I could have said print choose not five. But if it isn't 16 and it's computing, then I'm going to say choose not five anyway. But what I could perhaps say is if age is less than 16. But in this case, I'll just put, just to follow the original design, I will just say else choose not 5. So I'll just cut and paste my comment lines up here. If age is 16, choose not 5. Else we choose not 5. Now, if that statement is true, then it will check this if statement. If this if statement fails, it will go down to there. And if this, once this if statement finishes, it will come down to here. So if subject is computing, then we'll do all that. Else, I'm going to print y not. And I'll close my speech marks and close my brackets. So if I save that program and run this, so We've said that the age was 16, so let's just say that it's computing. So it's chose higher. So what it's done is it's went from subject down to computing. It's checked to the age of 16, which we've set up here. So it'll say choose higher. So let's just test all the other branches of the program. So let's not choose computing this time. Let's choose English. So you'll see that what it's done is it's evaluated that if statement there. So the subject isn't computing, so it's not even bothered because that condition isn't true. It's actually went all the way down to here and it's printed why not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to alter the age to 15. In fact, sorry, 14. I'm going to run the program. I'm going to say computing. And you'll see that because the age is 14, it's evaluated that condition to be true. Then it's evaluated this condition. And age isn't equal to 16. So it's said, choose math 5.